Hello, and welcome to an interview with Heidi Dulabon and Meta Fadria on the etiquette of ethics. I'm your moderator, Kelly Whitney. Meta is a certified executive coach and a tutor for the Oxford program on negotiation at said business school at the University of Oxford. She has extensive experience teaching executive education, cross-cultural negotiation, and immersion learning for academic and corporate partners. A certified trainer for the Richard Lewis cross-culture model, Meta is a master facilitator of culture shaping for the mining industry in Indonesia. Heidi is an international cultural consultant and etiquette expert. A coach for working professionals at all stages of their career, she has developed a learning strategy based on etiquette, empathy, and empowerment. Using her three E's, she's helped clients in a variety of industries to excel at specific goals and milestones and advance to new heights in their careers. Thank you, ladies, for joining us today. Heidi, take it away. Hello, Meta. Thank you so much for doing this. It is so lovely to see you again. Thank you very much for doing this for us. Um, so we'd like to talk about a few uh, questions and answers um, around cultural uh, competence and how you can navigate across cultures um, successfully and smoothly. So uh, our first question is, what is cultural competence and how important is it for effective communication? Okay. okay, so hi Heidi, it's great to be here and probably I would like to say hi to our viewers wherever you are. Your question about what is cultural competence, it's all about um, empathy. It's being able to feel, it's being able to see and to relate to the world and various issues is of other people do. So it's critically important as a high level social and personal skill. It sends signals to others that you really understand and value uh, where they're coming from. And now in terms of effective communication, then, um, it can be used to break barriers, yeah? um, especially for the nonverbal ones. Now, when you have that empathy, then you can build trust, no matter whether you agree or not uh, to, uh, to the others or not, but um, you can kind of like, you know, you, 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 are, you see it from different perspectives and then you are, uh, what you call it, like in, um, in someone else's shoes, that, that right? Yeah, yeah. I agree very much, Meta, and, and I love that you've pointed out that it, it is a skill and empathy is at the root of cultural competence. Walk a mile in someone else's shoes, as we say, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's very important to um, have some sort of an understanding of another culture uh, and appreciate that you do not have to share the beliefs, but you can appreciate that exactly. someone else. Yes, and, and uh, mm -hmm. I think that's all about um, being respectful as well. Yeah. So yeah. thank you. I, yeah. I, that's a terrific, terrific answer. And remember, once you once you uh, once you can do, you gain trust, and when you gain trust, and it's just easy to do. Um, name it, you're in business, uh, when you're doing negotiations, um, even if you're like studying and everything, it's, it's all about that. Oh, absolutely. That, and I'm so glad you pointed that out because trust without trust, how can you possibly um, do business or have it even social or business, any commerce uh, interactions or, or mm. political or science, you have to have some level of trust. So that's very important. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, well, our next question is, um, many of us are digital travelers. Even if we're only communicating through <laughs> Zoom from our homes, as we are today, I'm in the US and you are in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Our world is almost borderless in many ways. And each of us brings our own ethics to this global table and technology mm -hmm. allows us to interact immediately. Mm -hmm. What role should ethics play when we are interacting in virtual global world? Okay, wow. 
Okay, so now um, the role of ethics here. Well, as you know that the rapid radical changes, like now um, we're using Zoom and it's, it's like as if I'm just being with you or we're not separated by, you know, by, by two different uh, places or continents or islands. And we're not even, it doesn't even feel uh, that we are separated by different time zones, Heidi, like it's in the morning for you and it's in the evening for me. So it doesn't really feel like that. But then the role of ethics itself yeah, um, to the radical changes in the global business systems are highlighting the distinction between um, legality and legitimacy. Okay, mm -hmm. now to make a judgment about whether something is legal involves knowing whether some act uh, or behavior is compliant with established rules and regulations. Uh, but to say something is legitimate suggests so it passes its compliant uh, with established rules and regulations. Uh, sorry, but then, you know, it, it passes a test of reasonable and generally acceptable behavior. Sometimes we say that, you know, uh, the global court, yeah, like, of reasonable behavior is, is like, what, what is between, um, what is between uh, considered polite and, and, and impolite like that, yeah. Uh, and so um, we have to have that, we have to understand that, you know, that, that it is very, very important and, um, and, and what is acceptable now and what is uh, not acceptable is, just depends on the distinction whether someone is behaving like like I said the about legitimacy or um, legitimacy like that. Does that make sense, uh, yeah, Heidi? It, it, it does to me, um, especially when you think that while each of us, uh, our own cultures, we have our own expectations of behavior mm. and ethics and values. While we yeah. all have that, yet it is still all. Um, there is still a general accepted codes, mm. unwritten codes of behavior, yeah. if you will. Exactly. That, that exactly. Do, um, they are borderless. They do cross. You know, we're able yeah. to have, we're, we're, we're half a world away. And it's, we're, and it's just such a delight, a th treat for me to be able yeah. to see you and to converse with you. And, um, yeah. You know, we both knew, okay, this is a time and we're here, even though it's night, eight at night for you, eight in the morning for me. We, yeah. we know to, to be here and we can communicate. And, um, and I think that is the beauty mm -hmm. of our world. Yeah. That while we might, ethics and values uh, and etiquette yeah. vary across the world, yeah. there are these certain things that transcend all of exactly. that. Exactly. Behavior. Yes. And Heidi, for example, like this, whilst um, you and I both speak English, right? And, uh, uh, but the fact is that, you know, that, that I still have that culture that, oh, um, you know, like I'm still Indonesian and I do things probably in some, some the Indonesian ways I can do that, even though, you know, sometimes we do speak, uh, we both speak English and um, and we don't seem to be <laughs> like you know like like million million of uh, kilometers uh, apart like that. <laughs> oh, exactly, exactly. It's it's um, the beauty of technology. I I mm -hmm. want to thank Mr. Zoom whom or Miss Ms. Zoom. Ms. I Zoom. Hope we hope it's Ms. Zoom. Zoom. And I want to thank her for for creating this uh, <laughs> this wonderful technology. Um, well, our next question, Benta, mm -hmm. um, a lot of your work is around negotiating across yeah. borders. Uh, it's so interesting. Uh, how can you respectfully negotiate yet still be authentic to your beliefs and values? Mm, okay, that's a very good question, Heidi. 
first of all, I think when we talk about negotiations, we have to still stick to the principles of uh, negotiations. If you um, remember the BATNA or the ZOPA, those are the terminologies that are used in negotiations. But however, uh, we have to remember that when we are negotiating uh, with different people from different cultures. And like I said before, there are some things that we need to consider the, the different cultures. And one of the things is the empathy. You know, So once we, we have the empathy, uh, empathy, then we understand where this person um, sees things and comes from. When you do negotiating across uh, borders or across cultures um, and then a lot of things that you need to uh, that you need to consider like so much just different uh, just small things for example the timing and then the people who you're negotiating with um, like maybe their social status or um, and even sometimes the language that they're that they're talking that has to also be put into consideration that so that's how we can be effective by combining these things Heidi by by understanding what we're negotiating for and who we're negotiating with negotiating principle itself that will make um, your negotiation successful Oh, that's so well put, very well put, Meta. And, and I think it's really important what you said about um, um, staying, you know, being authentic, but you have to mm -hmm. adapt because exactly. you, you have to, I, I like to say you have to adapt reasonably, you know, mm -hmm. reasonable adaptation of yourself um, mm -hmm. because you have to be empathetic and and you and I have both done some role playing uh, and exercise with uh, yeah. negotiation. And when yeah. you are um, taking on um, someone, you're doing a role play and you're someone from a culture very different from your own, you have to learn something about that culture and exactly. how they would negotiate, uh, you know, for example, exactly. um, some cultures before you could even begin negotiation, they would like to know about your family, how, how are things? Yes. And in other cultures, um, say for me as an American, um, it'd be nice. I hope your family's well, but then that's enough. Let's get to business. You know, and how about in Indonesia? Would, well, would you yeah, pretty much where the, we are, we are the same too. We like to do like, you know, like small talks before we do the negotiation. Uh, we like to build trust before uh, we get into business like that. So um, first thing that you have to do and you have to remember for anybody who's going to be doing negotiations cross culture is doing their homework by uh, studying a little bit about the culture uh, would be good. So therefore, you know, that uh, at least they have some kind of knowledge how to build that trust first. Yeah, that's, um, that's good. Yes, I would say, you know, sometimes um, when we do a, a chit chat, right? Um, and then the safest thing to do is like, oh yeah, um, bring up something that is quite important from the country. So for example, it could be, you know, something that is uh, famous for, uh, or something that is well known like that, but, but try to keep it neutral, but make it, you know, but make it as if you are interested and genuinely interested to, uh, to that, to their country to, or to their culture. I agree. It has to be authentic. Do some research. Um, learn something about the other culture before you mm -hmm. can negotiate. And, and it's going to make you a more interesting person. It's going to broaden your horizons. And, and it's fun to learn about other cultures. So I hope we can encourage people to do that. <laughs> so th thank you for that. It's wonderful. You're welcome, um, Heidi. So um, Meta, uh, you once said that you have the you have to have the right mindset to navigate successfully in this cultural world. What is that mindset exactly? 
Uh, how would you describe it? Uh, how does the right mindset come into play when negotiating cross-culturally? Mm, okay. First of all, the mindset. What is mindset is, some, is, is a set of beliefs, right, and thoughts that will, um, that uh, makes what our behavior, that affects our behavior. Now, uh, in term like psychologists will, or will say that there are two types of mindset. One is the fixed one, and one is the growth. And there's another one, the flexible. Now, when the correct mindset, or here what I think that the right mindset to uh, approach or to be able to approach and uh, to be empathetical uh, is that you have to have like a flexible one, meaning that when you approach something, you don't start with being judgmental. Uh, you also uh, don't, um, you're not uh, putting your own assumptions. So uh, when you start with something that you're with flexible and that you, you start with a curiosity level, that really does um, help you to see it, like I said, like from the beginning, uh, see it be in other, uh, in, in someone else's shoes, right? In other people's shoes. Um, uh, and once you do that, um, and then you can see again from why this, why, why this person is doing this and, and, um, um, and seeing it not just, you know, just from one side to also be able to get like a win-win solution because this is what we want to have is a win-win solution. Oh, I love that. I love what you said about starting with a mindset that is curious. I'm big on it. If you're not curious, how can you authentically uh, learn about something why you yeah. know you have to be curious about another culture and also I, I love that you said without judgment you yeah. can't judge or um, or have these preconceived notions of another culture keep an open mind exactly and without judgment and be mm -hmm. curious and respectful and yes. then with empathy, you can start to learn another culture. You can start to understand. It's, it's very hard to have complete understanding of another culture other than your own. But you can sure try and celebrate the differences. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. I agree, Heidi. Uh, that's absolutely right. Uh, well, thank, thank you. Um, so here's a good question. In the <laughs> absence of deep cultural knowledge, What's mm -hmm. the best way to get along and minimize the opportunity to cause offense or make mistakes? Could you please give us an example of a mishap due to a lack of cultural knowledge? Yes, when, you know, sometimes we, um, again, when we uh, don't do our homework and, and or we tend to take culture for granted, it can, you know, cause things that we that might lead to things that we don't really want okay. um, an example of that probably um, you know can be like uh, one time I was in a um, in a in a meeting right and it was set up right um, this was between a um, a different culture um, uh, Western and Indonesian and at that time we had a meeting um, just in the morning until the uh, late afternoon or in the afternoon it was only like two hours probably and there was like tea and uh, cakes like that and and you know like snacks but then uh, none of us actually ate um, you know because then after the uh, during the meeting and then after that the host said please uh, let's have some coffee or some snacks and none of us just uh, did not did not eat why was that why was that why was that because 
that was during Ramadan. <laughs> and ah. as you know, that Ramadan is the fasting, um, fasting. Yes, it's the fasting time for us. So during the daytime, we we don't eat, right? Um, so uh, <laughs> that was. Um, that was a little bit awkward because then I said, oh, we're, we're very sorry, um, I'm fasting. And and I think um, none of us ate. So uh, it was, it was, I mean, we can see from the hostess point of view that that there was a that was a very nice gesture, you know, there was there was snacks and there was uh, but at that time it would be better if then um, uh, you might want to check yeah you might want to check or you might want to uh see whether you know there 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 is uh, there's something or there is a uh it was the right time another another one was uh but but sorry but that didn't affect anything of the negotiation or the business itself so thank god but then there was another story that uh, happened a while ago um, because you know in Indonesia there's like a lot of um, holidays and celebrations because we have you know we have the different religions in Indonesia so then there was one long weekend that my friend said oh there's a long weekend like that but um, so then she booked a ticket to Bali but then unfortunately when she got there she couldn't do anything. Oh. Do you know why? Why? Because because at that time it was uh, nyepi, and mm -hmm. nyepi is um, is a is is a is a is a time where you know because they, they're Hindus, right? And so they don't. That's a time where nobody does anything. So it's just complete silence. You're not allowed to go out, and you're not allowed to. Um, you limit your conversations. In fact, you don't do any conversations like for the entire day. So that day, um, unfortunately, my friend couldn't go anywhere or couldn't do anything. So uh, she just said, oh, I'll see it from the bright side. I just stayed at the hotel. I had a very quiet and relaxing day. So, <laughs> Oh, those are wonderful examples. <laughs> And um, yes, I always say that you have to be aware of who you're entertaining um, mm -hmm. or who you, you are doing business with and be re very respectful of those cultures. And, and um, while your uh, host um, was being very gracious and, and acting as a good host, offering cakes and tea, um, but, she, you know, she didn't realize it's Ramadan. And so, you know, <laughs> but I think it was very gracious of you to to handle it the way you did that you you acknowledged that her she was being hospitable and that was very nice however it's it's wrong and yeah. and th that's a those are great and going to but, Bali uh, yeah but you know but but at that time we said oh that's fine because if you you know for those who aren't fasting that's fine for us we're we we we're, we're just you know because then we just uh, carry on and uh, so it wasn't uh, like a big deal so both of us kind of understand but nowadays I think people are getting more and more um, you know like uh, more sensitive about that so I think um, now it also uh, actually um, uh, makes me also aware and so whenever Ramadan is coming or beforehand Ramadan I make sure whenever there is a meeting or or there's a an event I say oh be aware that on that time it is Ramadan so you might want to do this 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 like that so both both sides learn you know so it's not just one it's not just uh, the different culture but it's also myself so you know I have to be more aware of that too so oh, we we both learn yeah it's very important i've worked with groups that are having um entertaining other cultures and they forget about the menu some cultures and religions cannot eat yeah. pork or different different foods mm. and so you have mm. to just be 
or our vegetarians yes. or yes. yeah, it, it's funny. I was in India one time um, and no business was done because it was Diwali. It was, oh, mm -hmm. it was just the big celebration. So it was, yeah, it's funny. You have to really check the calendar and um, yes. respect. <laughs> and, and it's all about, you know, being respectful, but, but make the effort to know that much about the culture that there yes. are holidays and there are uh, religious um uh, events happening and mm -hmm. uh, and just you know even holiday you know here for the fourth of july everything is closed for our nation's mm -hmm. birthday so you just have to be aware of all of these different dates but thank yeah. you that's a great great <laughs> examples um our next question is uh how can cultural competence advance your career um, uh, alternately, how can a lack of cultural competence uh, completely derail or stall your career? Um, mm. Yeah, well, let's let's just break that down first. Um, okay. What do, what do you think? Why is it? How can it help advance our careers or um, limit us if we're not mm. culturally aware? And you live a very global life. Yeah, you're dealing with the world. I, oh, it's very important nowadays, Heidi. It's very important. I think, in fact, uh, it's one of the so, it's the soft skills that you must have nowadays. Um, either uh, put it like this, Heidi. Either you are in a big multinational company, or either you're doing like a small scale business, or even if it's like your own business, you are still connected to the global world. In multinational companies, name divisions that, um, that do not have any connections with the global world. Let's say that you're in a procurement, procurement business, you're going to be dealing with um, sellers uh, from probably a different country, right? And then you have to be able to negotiate. You have to be able to talk to them. Um, you're in the law division, then probably you will have to deal with the, the, the what do you call it? The international law. You're doing the human resources, you're in the human resources, and then you will have to do like, um, you know, like probably the, uh, now it's very popular, the talent mobility, um, you're dealing with, you know, you, you, you're dealing with your talents, and then they're moving from one uh, country to another or those kind of examples so it's a it's a must so you need to be able to have that that culture competence you need to uh, have a, a, a flexible mindset so that you're not you know judgmental you're emp you have the empathy um, um, and you and of course you master at least one global language, which is English. And I think that's also very, very important. Now, when you're in a small scale business, let's say you're doing it, you're opening your own business, you advertise uh, through social media. Let's say, say for example, Instagram, and then you, or Facebook or LinkedIn, right? And you still have to have that cultural competency. You still have to have that ethics. You have to know the international do's and don'ts. Um, what, um, what the international market wants, what the global market wants. Uh, so those kind of things, yeah, it really helps you. Either you are pursuing your career in multinational companies, or doing your own business and you start um, to start, you know, building your own empire, building business, because everything now is all connected, is globally connected. Oh, I agree. And here I am in the in the US, I'm in the um, in the south, uh, sort of on the eastern seaboard, and I'm in Tennessee. And there is a big push um, by some different organizations in this state to help um, people, local people that are living here 
but find a job all over the world. They're interviewing in Dubai and all over the world from here, thanks to technology and thanks, but I don't think that's the right word to um, the global pandemic to um, you know, COVID-19 has people working from home and you realize you can work from home. And now these talent pools for HR have, have expanded that you, now you can look not just geographically, but you can look in the whole world. So if someone here in, in, in my town would like to work in say uh, Jakarta or Dubai <laughs> or you know, London, um, they can do that with technology, but they have to be culturally competent to be able to even apply for that job or to be successful in that job. Even though they're not in the office physically, to the communication and the respect mm. and the empathy, mm. you have to be aware of all, all that we've been saying today. Um, I think that's just so important. And while the world is so big, it's really so small. So um, exactly. Yeah. And we have become digital travelers ourselves, right, Heidi? Yes. Like we this are. morning, exactly. Like this morning, I, uh, I I did a Zoom meeting with uh, someone in Jakarta, and then after that, I went to Pangkal Pinang, which is a very small um, island uh, in Indonesia. And then after that, I where did I go to? I think I went to the UK, and then here I am with you in the US. So here, how quickly we can. <laughs> You've we traveled can, the world. I know. Traveled the only, world in one day. <laughs> if we could only get frequent flyer miles, maybe Ms. Zoom will figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yes. that is, it's, it's really, truly amazing. It's, it's just amazing. Um, well, do you have any um, suggestions for people who would like to improve? After listening to this, I hope they're inspired to, to be curious and, and empathetic and respectful and learn about another culture. Um, how do you have suggestions for someone? How would they go about that? It's very important, just like we mentioned earlier um, and I think um, you can be like um, someone with cultural competency again because for me it is a skill um, and like I said you have to learn it you have to practice it put into practice as well the more you understand um of course how do you get it firstly by reading mm -hmm. read a lot uh connect with a lot of people if possible from different cultures um that is one great way to understand um and to be cultural competence of course um but i think you know but i think nowadays either you are you know, somebody for like my age or millennials, we are already part of the global community. And maybe we don't, we actually have, we already have that competency in us. Um, well, to me, to be able to, you know, to, to, to increase that skill again is to read, uh, to do a lot of reading, to do a lot of um, exposures with different cultures. So do as much as you can. And I know that nowadays is a bit difficult to, you know, to, to actually physically be there. But by just being online also, um, it can um, enhance your knowledge and also in increase and read signs um, you know, like um, read signs of of your of 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 your counterparts. Um, um, also, you know, always do your homework. Always, always do that. <laughs> so. Oh, absolutely! And and I know for me, you know, I was lucky enough to have traveled. You know, we were we mm. were raised to to appreciate other cultures and through travel. And yeah. while we can't maybe have that exposure of travel, yeah. we can still- Hopefully we can. I oh, mean, we, 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 we still will have hope, right? I hope so yes. because I am 
dying to get on a plane and fly abroad. I, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm, Likewise. I'm, what I lost is off the chart. But, but in the meanwhile, we can mm -hmm. through Zoom or through attending webinars around the world or just be uh, curious. Um, there are courses online you can take and, and coaching. I know that I, I coach a lot of people and I know you're coaching people. So um, if, if you're near Meta, she's a wonderful coach. And uh, so there <laughs> Thank are- Thank you, Heidi too. <laughs> Heidi so too. There are, there are a lot of good ways that people can learn how to do this. And I think it starts with what you said earlier, a curiosity, um, no judgment, a respect and empathy and um, the world is waiting. It's so fascinating and interesting. And mm. Meta, thank you. Thank you so much Likewise, Heidi. For, for taking thank time you. and, and, and speaking, uh, speaking with us today. You have made my day. I might, you've made, I <laughs> thank just, you. Thank you for this. I, I thank you, Heidi. And I do hope that, um, what we have discussed will be very uh, useful for all of your viewers and um, your coaches, of course. And I hope that, you know, that with this talk, it increases um, more people's awareness of cultural competency. Oh, I hope as well. Meta, thank you very, very much. And, and all the very, very best. Stay safe. You too, Heidi. Thank, thank you very much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.